Hello, good morning, uh, Oracle community, uh, colleagues, and friends in Asian Pacific Oracle com uh, technology community. Uh, first of all, I want to thank the invitation, uh, APAC Oracle user group community, for the invitation to present uh, uh, the topic. So this is going to be my third presentation uh, for this uh, webinar series. Uh, uh, before that, I had a uh, one pr top presentation uh, focusing on uh, Oracle Cloud, and the second one was uh, Oracle Two C upgrade. But this pres this third presentation uh, has a little bit of change on the topic. So we will be focusing on the virtualized Oracle Rack database. So um, we're going to discuss uh, the benefit and the use case of the uh, virtualized Oracle database. And after that, we're going to uh, discuss some technical detail to how to implement, how to Im uh, virtualize Oracle database with two major uh, methods, uh, Oracle VM, and VMware. So for those people who have not uh, attended my presentation, this is just an introduction about myself. So uh, I've been working on Oracle uh, technology for years. Uh, so many for database cloud virtualization. So the, the lead architect of a virtualized in Dell EMC Oracle organization. I also am the co-founder, co-founder and the and the, and the uh, current vice president of Oracle Cloud Six. So I've been within uh, Oracle Ace Director community for eight years. So during the this eight, eight, eight years with the support. Uh, from the ACE director community, I was able to give uh, about more than 120, uh, 160 presentation in um, about 20 countries. Uh, last thing I want to mention is uh, I have my uh, personal blog, my technology blog. Uh, uh, that is uh, the, uh, the name of the blog is very long, but uh, you can go to Google, uh, search with my name, Caillou and Oracle. Uh, you will get a my blog a link immediately. So on the blog, I upload all of, all of my presentation um, uh, that I have done in last about ten years. So far, I think this is the this is the last one I have done. Uh, I'm doing right now. This probably is 160 something like that. So you can get uh, all of my presentation. So with uh, without further introduce, I will uh, come to. Give a little bit introduction about my current work. So the technical lead and the architect for Dell Oracle Solution Engineering. Recently, uh, one year ago, uh, we actually Dell EMC, uh, Dell and the EMC uh, uh, merged together. So so right now, the 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 team uh, I'm working on actually focus on both. They are in the EMC technology. So we basically uh, produce the solution that based on uh, Dell EMC technology and then prepare the, the, the infrastructure to run for customer to run, to run Oracle database. So from this diagram, you can see the storage will be based on EMC, Dell EMC, VMAX storage. So we also build a, uh, based on Dell uh, networking, a Dell server. On top of that, we have a VMware and a Red Hat. So this is the actual entire solution stack to support Oracle database, including most uh, complex Oracle database, such as Oracle Rack. And, and uh, so this is the one that, that we just uh, released a few months ago. Re this solution is based on uh, the infrastructure from Dell and the EMC and also implemented 
based on the uh, virtualized environment using VMware. So that's something uh, uh, we're going to discuss how to implement this. Uh, we'll use this as an example to show how to virtualize the Oracle Rack database uh, 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 using the v uh, VMware. A few years ago, we also uh, worked on the, uh, the virtualized Oracle database on Oracle VM. So that's why I, I, I'm actually uh, include both uh, uh, both virtualized solution in this presentation. I mentioned in the beginning, uh, during this presentation, uh, we'll basically cover three topics. First one is uh, some we're going to discuss some of the use case uh, about virtualized Oracle database. Why we want to virtualize Oracle database? What are the business purpose? What are the main, uh, main, uh, and the major uh, usage uh, of uh, of a virtualized Oracle database? Uh, then after that, we're going to discuss the two major methods to virtualize Oracle Rack database. Of course, this method also applies to non-Rack database. Um, because the Rack database just make a little bit more uh, complicated in terms of uh, the deployment method as well as the underneath uh, infrastructure. Uh, we're going to discuss uh, two major uh, challenge. Uh, um, one is uh, networking configuration. Second is uh, the shared storage configuration. As we know, uh, those two are the major difference between the Rack and non-Rack. If we implement a, a non-Rack environment, uh, you can, such as a single node database, you don't need a shear storage. You don't necessarily have to uh, have the shear storage. And also you may not need a, the, the uh, private network. So that makes things much simpler. But if we want to implement Rack, you have to prepare those two. So we're going to discuss how to prepare the multiple network, including private network and, um, and the public network how to prepare a shared storage for Rack database. Those are the, those are the major uh, 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 challenge. So once we prepare those, those rest of Oracle Rack deployment uh, is pretty much the same for, uh, for physical environment or virtual environment. Of course, we're also going to discuss some of the best practice uh, that's pretty much unique for the virtual environment, which may not apply to physical environment. So let's start with use case. So we're going to examine the, some of the most popular use case to, to use virtual, to virtualize database. Of course, the first one, the Oracle Public Cloud. The database is a service in the Oracle Public Cloud. So the most Oracle database cloud service in Oracle Public Cloud is based on virtual environment. So for example, today, if you go to Oracle Public Cloud to request a database service, which can be one of this, one, because Oracle Public Cloud gives you different options to to, to to provision the database service. And uh, most likely you will get a, a, a virtual, virtual database, not really a physical machine. Uh, some of our database cloud service, database X data, uh, Oracle database X data cloud service, and the X data uh, machine in, uh, in Oracle cloud. Those are the options that Oracle provide you. All of this top four or top five, are based on the virtual machine, which means, uh, uh, so your database will not be uh, running directly on physical server. Of course, Oracle also gave you the one of a chance. If you really don't like uh, running on a virtual environment, you could request the bare metal. And, uh, and one of the reason to require to ask a bare metal was uh, uh, either you don't want to share a physical machine with a uh, with uh, other customer, uh, or you want a specific some uh, advanced hardware such as uh, uh, like a, a NVMe drive, uh, which require extremely low latency, and uh, uh, those uh, if you request if you, for your environment if you needed those kind of uh, database service, then you could request 
the bare metal database, uh, uh, cloud database service on bare metal. But uh, for most of the database uh, option, including some production database, you, you, if you request it by default, uh, you will get a virtualized database. So it's safe to say that if you're running your Oracle database on Oracle database public cloud, most likely your database is sitting on virtual environment. Uh, and uh, let's take a look at how Oracle, why Oracle do that. Now, what is the benefit? Oh, this is just an example. So I mean, actually using this uh, GUI to show you, uh, uh, example to show you, if you go to Oracle Public Cloud, you request service. So what, what are you going to get? So this just to show the provision service. So as a, as a, one of the benefit of uh, using Oracle Public Cloud is uh, you you just put a request. Uh, you don't have to worry about the entire provision service. You put this request using this kind of uh, GUI, Oracle will provision the database service for you. But uh, the question is uh, how, how this was possible. So the another, uh, this is another window. So if you use the, the this GUI, if I, how much you need it, uh, what a version, what kind of a software version, uh, and the Oracle will, you know, take the Oracle probably more or even less depending on size of the database to provision database for you. And uh, why, how Oracle can do that? So underneath Quest a database service, to, in the Oracle, in the, in back end, in the Oracle Cloud, uh, Oracle actually take your request and uh, uh, active for one of the uh, the template, so so you don't necessarily they don't necessarily do it. There will be no installation. So what they have is on the back end there is something called a virtual machine template, which already have has all the Oracle database configured, including rack, and uh, and those template actually got stored into the uh, something called a software library. So, and uh, you store in the library. Then, when you request such a database service, as you did it this one. So, for example, if you say I want a certain number of uh, word version, let's say if I want a twelve enterprise edition twelve C database, and the back end there is a uh, uh, for this. Room. The back end the Oracle Cloud as part of Oracle Cloud service called Sales Portal service, they actually active that template and 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 put it uh, uh, by giving some kind of uh, a few parameters such as this, how many CPU core, and what's the memory config, and uh, that's all they need to active that template. And when they active template, the 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 template become the virtual machine. And because the template itself has pre-installed, a pre-configured Oracle database, when they active that template, the virtual machine become virtual machine. The virtual machine, when it start up, the virtual machine uh, itself carry the uh, Oracle database, uh, maybe rank or single node database. When it start up, the virtual machine, Oracle database will start up, start up automatically. So that's the again. That's how how fast. Uh, that's why the Oracle can provision the Oracle database for you. And uh, the, the entire process, when you you can go to GUI, you can go to Oracle Public Cloud to request the database any time during the day, and the Oracle will process this for you in less than thirty minutes. Uh, and if you request a bigger database, it'll probably take a little bit longer time. Because essentially, in the back end, Oracle copy the image, copy the template image for you. So if you request like a 10 terabyte database, it will take a little bit longer because it will take longer to copy 10 terabyte uh, image. If you provision small database, like such as one, like maybe like a, a 10 a 10 gig database, 
gigabytes. It probably takes because it takes less time less time to copy one hundred gig file than ten terabyte file. So that's essentially how Oracle did that. So now you can see that there's a couple of uh, key technology, uh, VM template, and uh, self provisioning, and uh, and the database running on VM. So all this, why today you ha you have such capability to self provision your database, largely because the your the database is running on virtual environment, and uh, your database is pre configured and stored as a template. So that's one of the reasons that that would so I can I can safely say that the Oracle uh, database as a service is a very good example to to show why we need a virtualized database. And 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 in fact if you provision the database on Google Cloud and uh, you have good experience, that also uh, demonstrated your database can run on virtual environment safely and uh, with good performance because uh, you, because when you provision such a database, database most likely is running a virtual environment. So that's why I I kind of like put it like a Oracle database call database call as a database service is an example of a virtualized Oracle database. Yeah. So the entire things is provisioning. So before you you provision database, the 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 self service uh, administrator already set an entire physical environment, uh, con uh, uh, configured. They already uh, uh, configured the the virtual machine, configured the storage, and configure all the network, and also uh, produce the uh, template. So then, so this is all. This is done by self service administrator. Then, then you as business user, uh, the call self self service user, only thing you need to do is go to the 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 self service portal, which means in this case is go to Oracle Public Cloud, request such service as you did, uh, like uh, using this using this tool. So this is kind of a self service portal. You give them, and then the the, the entire self service will work back in to provision such service for so that's how Oracle could do that. This this was uh, the probably most famous use case. The second use case uh, is uh, we we would like to see is uh, how virtual virtualized database play key role in database consolidation. So I put this kind of a, a diagram to show a multi level of a, uh, of the database consolidation. So starting with uh, storage virtualization, so you you have a single sense storage that uh, can host many different database. So we call this uh, storage virtualization. Then second level is uh, uh, server virtualization. So you have a same physical server that. Actually, can host multiple virtual machine. Each virtual machine run uh, one database. So this is server virtualization. The next level is database instance virtualization. You have single OS that actually run multiple database instance. So uh, upper level, uh, higher level is a port portable database. So you have a single database instance that run multiple PDB. Uh, so that's another level, and the uh, top level. Not tablet is actually the most uh, 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 small level is actually you have a single database, single uh, pre PDB that run multiple scale, uh, multiple multiple schema. So you so this is all the different level of consolidation, and uh, you can uh, as customer you can choose which level you want to go for, and of course uh, next slide I'm gonna. And show you different level. Uh, depend on the the level you choose. Uh, 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 if you go high level, you will have a, a high efficiency because uh, uh, you you consolidate the database in a single database in multiple schema is high efficiency. You don't waste a lot of CPU. As uh, like for example, um, if you don't do any sharing, you each each database will will run their own database server. You kind of waste a lot of CPU, but if you do 
uh, 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 storage virtualization, you you will have uh, some overhead to to host multiple OS, and you, of course you will also have a multiple database instance. So uh, it's uh, so the I would consider the schema level consolidation is the most efficient one, but uh, this also bring less consolidation. So for example, if you worry about the security, that's something you don't want. You don't want to share your database with your competitor database schema in the same database. So of course you will back down a little bit more, depending on what kind of isolation you want. So the, the most isolated one would be, you know, you run, you don't share anything at all. You have your physical server, as we mentioned that before, I just want to run my database in bare metal. I don't want to share with any other neighbor. Uh, that's no sharing at all. But if you want to <clears throat> little bit relax, you can share virtual machine. So I would say uh, the VM level is better than database instance level because uh, uh, if you use a server virtualization, at least your database is running on different OS from other database. So, so you can see the different level isolation so, so, uh, and uh, then you just when you make a choice, you can you basically uh, you you can make your own determination uh, based on the uh, the level of isolation you want it, security you want it, or how efficient you want it. And uh, see, uh, the reason I want to put it here is uh, I just want to uh, emphasize server virtualization is the one way to do database consolidation. I know Oracle has been advocated a lot about uh uh. Pluggable database. Uh, this is another level of uh, consolidation. So, so it it is up to your your business case to make a selection. But certainly, server virtualization is one way to consolidate, and they do have their benefit. So for example, I have a. Uh, I also consider both efficiency and isolation. I'm not on either of these extreme. No sharing at all, or share everything. On the, on the, on a schema level, I'm actually achieve a little bit of security and also have good efficiency. And, uh, this is just an example to, to show I actually, for example, I have a full server. I can run multiple database, uh, uh, multiple, multiple record database instance. So you could, this uh, actually give you great benefit, uh, by using the virtualization. Uh, the, of course, the consolidation is one thing. For example, I actually I'm running multiple database. Um, so if if we don't do consolidation, for this case, I need probably need a six server. Each database is two node. I need a six server. In this case, I can have four node, and I also can add more. You I, literally, I can add a ten database uh, uh, share. So basically, you decouple your number of database uh, uh, node. With a physical, physical, physical machine. So, and this also give you an advantage. For example, if I know one physical machine uh, uh, went down, I can easily move the data, the 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 the, the, the database, uh, the first node of database one move to other node. So that that actually give us uh, uh, more capability. And uh, and as we mentioned, that uh, if we use uh, the other benefit such as uh, template, so. So if you deploy, if you want to deploy database on a physical machine, every time you have to, either you have to do manually or you have to use a script to de deploy. And there's no, no such thing called template. So the, you, in order to use a template, you have to virtualize database. And, uh, another, people may, uh, consider, uh, may, may have some concern about the uh, performance. Uh, we, we actually did a, Using the uh, Oracle VM or the VMware, we found that actually the virtualized database doesn't make too much uh, overhead. It's probably less than ten percent overhead. So in today, uh, we have a parent CPU. So so I don't think that the CPU is an issue. To uh, is is reason that prevent us to do any virtual uh, virtualized database. So so really performance should not be the the, the issue. And uh, uh, this is another use case. Something I'm going to discuss is uh, we have built this solution that uh, uh, using two two server uh, to consolidate multiple database. 
we have small config uses small less powerful server we can configure uh, 10 database use a medium level server we can configure uh, uh, 30 database use a powerful larger powerful for you server such as uh, they are 940 that each has a maximum uh, could have a um, uh, 100 100 uh, 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 each maximum can have an 88 physical core uh, together we ha we could have 176 core and this we can consolidate the 50 database in this environment so so you for this kind of infrastructure you could easily use as a uh, uh, implement the uh, database uh, like uh, uh, private cloud environment. It's one of our architecture. So you have uh, their own VM and a three development database uh, can consolidate in a single VM. And each database has two nodes. And that's actually one of the best practices. If you want running rack, and the two nodes of the rack uh, 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 should be on two physical machine. Uh, that's how we designed it. Okay, so let's talk about uh, some of the tech uh, architecture design or how to implement uh, 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 the, and, uh, uh, Oracle database on Oracle VM environment. So, if you want to run Oracle database on VM environment, you have to remember that the, your database node is no longer a physical server; it's on virtual machine. And a physical virtual machine, uh, um, each physical server can run multiple virtual machine. And uh, when you create a virtual machine, uh, you have to run an operating system on top of virtual machine. So. And uh, and uh, once you build a virtual machine, if you remove access to to the virtual machine, you simply cannot tell if this is a virtual machine or, not, or physical machine. Uh, and uh, this behavior is very similar. So, but the technical challenge will be uh, how to present the networking and uh, and storage to the to a physical server uh, to the uh, VM. So, for example, as we know. If you if we implement Oracle database on physical machine, the networking is so obvious because each physical server has network port. So the, those uh, network port is a physical, is there. You just have to plug in. But if you run virtual machine, the virtual machine itself is a concept is very abstract virtual concept. There is no physical uh, uh, car. Uh, linked to the virtual machine. So you have to rely on the physical uh, network car in the virtual ma in the physical machine, which is a, a virtual server, and uh, present those n virtual machine, pre present those network uh, to the vo uh, to a virtual machine as a virtual network. So the so, so this is just an example. I'm going to I'm going to actually discuss how to how to present that. The one of the benefit to run virtual machine on Oracle vehicle make this a specific advantage is you uh, you Oracle you can just pay, um, your the Oracle license to to run Oracle software is based on a subset of uh, it's based on the the how many virtual core that you use for the virtual machine. So for example, if you physical machine has a uh, uh, thirty two core, but uh, when I run my Oracle database on virtual machine, uh, if I don't need a 32 core, let's say if I give a 16 core to a virtual machine, then I only need to pay 16 core license to run Oracle, run Oracle database. So that's a, that's a very good advantage for that. Uh, so that's one of the benefits. Second benefit we mentioned that is template. So Oracle pretty much published publish all the, the, uh, uh, the, the, Publish the, the the template for all the Oracle software. Obviously, the most complicated template is Oracle Rack. Uh, so it's there, so you can download it. You can uh, you can uh, uh, you can download it. You can uh, uh, follow the. There is actually Oracle white paper to show you how to uh, how to use those Rack template to to create 
to create a rack instance on a virtual environment. It's pretty easy to follow. And as a matter of fact, today, if you go to Oracle Cloud, you want to provision the two node rack on Oracle Cloud. That's how they did it. They actually active the rack template and, and give it a rack base for you. So you can easily go to Oracle Cloud, try that, or you can build your own Oracle VM environment and download Oracle uh, VM uh, rack template. You can build a rack by yourself. So when Oracle rack running on, on VM environment, uh, the it is very similar. Uh, the architecture is very similar to the running on physical environment. Only the major difference is uh, your Oracle your Oracle database server running on virtual machine. And the rest of the technical stack is very, very similar. You still need a shared storage. You still need uh, the public network. The difference is uh, the shared storage and the public network needs to present into the, the virtual machine. So your virtual machine can literally, from virtual machine, you have to see the, the, the private network. You have to see the, those shared storage, not on the, the physical machine level. So, so that, that's why it's a little bit more a challenge. So, uh, so as a DBA or or as your uh, system admin, you have to uh, uh, present your storage to the virtual environment because your database is running a virtual environment. So this is a kind of, kind of a diagram to show uh, uh, how the how how to build a virtual network. So each of this uh, this example showed uh, two physical server. I have two physical server. And, and uh, each physical server has a four port, four physical port. So what I do is uh, I'm actually using this physical port to, to create a bridge. So we have a three bridge, public bridge, management bridge, and a private bridge. So management bridge is mainly for, for the, for the, for, for the Oracle, uh, VM, uh, to work. So that's not something that Oracle Rack needed, but that's why those, Managing network is not presenting into the virtual machine. So virtual machine itself doesn't see the managing network. But these two, public and the private, is something we prepare for, for, for virtual machine. Because we're going to present this public and private network bridge into virtual machine. So virtual machine needs to see these two network as a virtual network so that when we, Build an Oracle rack on top of that. We can use a public for pub, public uh, database network. We can use a, this private bridge for the for the for the private network for a rack private network. And uh, we also can see that this private network we follow the best practice. This private network is bounded by uh, is based on the bounding of the two physical network car. So which means if any of these physical network car fail. Uh, we still have a HA, and also the, we also need to present the, this uh, shared storage through the uh, physical machine into virtual machine. So next slide, we're going to show how to do that. Yeah, so this is a create a virtual as part of, part of a installation. We have to create a virtual machine. In this case, I'm showing uh, uh, the, the big cluster, the A node cluster. So I create a A. Uh, virtual machine. Uh, this just show uh, two example of two virtual machine. So I presented two network, public network and the private network. And uh, so private network is through port one through this bridge and presented in as a private network for guest VM. And the same for the private network. I I bound this port three and port five and I present. Uh, through the bridge into guest v, uh, VM. So in this case, both guest VM1 and guest VM2 uh, will see two uh, virtual network. E01 is E0 and E01. E0, E0 is for pub public. E01 is for, 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 uh, for private. So, so that's how, uh, um, when you deploy Oracle rack on, these two guest, guest VM, you can network. So although those are virtual network, uh, um, uh, because they are not actually uh, the 
the physical pole, but they use the through bridge. So whenever traffic going to E zero, the traffic will come will will go through this bridge and come to the pole one. Uh, same way for uh, second node will come to pole one, and the pole one will connect to a physical switch. So same apply to E E E one. Is one. So if you have a uh, uh, the the private interconnect traffic, the private interconnect traffic will come to this bridge, and uh, and it's, and uh, and come to port three and port five, and port three port five will be or uh, the physical port that connect to the the actually outside the private interconnect switch. So that's how the port three on no no one will communicate port three on no no two. And uh, so that was the, uh, so this is actually the screen show uh, as part of a uh, virtual machine, you you basically select it, you give the two private, uh, give that two virtual network, public network and private network. The next thing is the storage. So uh, as part of uh, uh, the REC uh, deployment, you have to prepare a shared storage to them. So Oracle recommendation was, uh, 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 if you're running Oracle VM, uh, uh, so Oracle VM can see uh, two different types of storage. One is called virtual disk, which is uh, sitting sitting on the NFS, uh, the uh, CF, uh, the Oracle cluster file system, the, uh, the Oracle yeah ACF uh, OCFS cluster file system, uh, and uh, or you can uh, you can present a physical disk. So for example. In in this this physical disk present into this physical machine, and uh, and uh, and this physical disk uh, can be built as a cluster file uh, as a virtual file system, or just live as a, a physical disk. So Oracle, uh, the, your uh, virtual machine OS can be set on a virtual disk, uh, or other application. Uh, for example, some log file or some data, some application file can sit or including Oracle Home can sit on virtual disk. But Oracle data file or your OCR or Vodin disk, uh, best practice would be uh, physical disk. Uh, Oracle does not uh, recommend uh, we use a physical disk to store the, the anything that related to Oracle Rack or Oracle database. So that's the that's the, the practice. So storage, physical disks are recommended uh, for a production database. If you want to uh, configure some development database, probably it's okay to put a database on the virtual disk. And there are some guidelines to configure the the virtual CPU. As we know, when we configure a virtual machine, you have to tell uh, uh, you have to specify how many which CPU you want to use. So there are some guidelines that how to map which CPU with a physical core. So if your, uh, if your server itself has a 16 core, so recommendation is uh, you can put a, a one, your, the maximum you can put is a, a 16 which CPU. So, but uh, you also can get a little bit more, but the recommendation, the total number of virtual CPU should not be more than 2x of your real CPU. So for example, if you have a 16-core server, your total virtual CPU, all the virtual machine together running on that physical server, the all the CPU together, the virtual CPU together from all the virtual machine, the total number of virtual CPU should not be over 32, which is 2x of your, your physical core. And uh, another thing, there are some best practice to specify the um, the the some kernel parameter running on virtual machine. And also important recommendation is uh, uh, if you're running two node rack or multiple node rack, all the all the uh, the virtual machine that run as uh, database node should not be on a single single physical machine. So you have to. So, for example, if you want to run a node rack database, uh, so it's recommended 
to have a, a physical server. So you put each VM on each physical server. But of course, you can run uh, multiple rack. So for example, you can run four node rack, four, four of the a node rack database. In this case, uh, you, each, each guest VM, each physical server can run uh, four virtual machine. Each virtual machine is a one node of one rack, but you cannot have a, uh, two, two same uh, node of, uh, two node of the same uh, rack running on the same physical server. Because that will defeat the, the, the have purpose. So, so once you pr prepare those CPU, now also you prepare the, the storage, uh, the, uh, the, the uh, shared storage, and also prepare the public and private network. That's pretty much it. Uh, before uh, the uh, all the work you need to do, to be, you need to prepare for Oracle Rack installation. The rest of Oracle Rack installation is very similar to the physical environment. So this screenshot uh, that I did for the the 12C department. In this case, I was using the the uh, the flexible cluster, so Inno flexible cluster. So you can see that. So the E0. Uh, that was the virtual network. E01 was the second virtual network. So in this case, I'm not doing any bonding because the bonding is already done on the on the on the on the uh, VM server level. So so yeah. The so next slide is to show to actually show the storage. So you have to provide the storage. In this case, storage is presented from from uh, from the physical server. So, so, and then I'm just uh, after installation. You can see this is very similar to the, to the, to the, to the, to the physical environment. So that basically show the, the for uh, Oracle uh, Oracle VM VM environment. Now let's take a look at uh, what's our practice we have to follow to watch it is on a VM environment, uh, which is a little bit different. The, the main concept is very similar to Oracle VM. So in this case, you, you still uh, run your Oracle database on guest VM, not on physical server. So the, the, the underneath the hypervisor, the name is a little bit different. So or in Oracle VM, they call Oracle VM server. And uh, uh, the VMware they call the EXI uh, hypervisor, uh, EXI, uh, EXI. So, but uh, still, uh, you still running the virtual machine on top of that. So let's see what our benefit uh, to virtual on VMware. Uh, some of those are very similar to virtual to 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 Oracle VM. So one thing is the consolidation. So you can run multiple uh, database on physical server. Without a VM, you have to run database on same multiple database on s either on single OS or on sing same database with a PDB, uh, multiple database, either multiple database instance or multiple PDB, PDB or even worst case, multiple schema. Those are, those does not give us enough uh, uh, isolation. So you're going to share Either share database or share put a PDB or you share database instance or even share OS. But uh, when we put this on virtual machine, your database has their own OS. And also second one is easy provisioning. So we have a similar way as a template. You can put a database in a template. You can, you can deploy easily. Um, manageability. So your database is running a physical machine. The one of the benefit is uh, if your server, let's say if you, if you, if for the server you want to replace the server, you have a newer server. In this case, you can just take the virtual machine and move to different server. That it can be done very easily. But if you don't use that, uh, if you have your database run a physical server, then replacing physical server, you some 
you you most likely you end up reinstall Oracle database. So that's the obvious is more work. Uh, Habitability is definitely an advantage. As to mention that uh, fail, uh, uh, and then the, the the VM just take the or take the the, uh, the VM will take your database to move to move to a different uh, different physical server. So so yeah. So we'll restart it. the the this field will restart it, your virtual machine on uh, including the database instance on another physical host. So so simply you have a, you have your database availability uh, doesn't depend on your hardware. So that's definitely a great advantage. Yeah. So so I don't want to uh, so basically I just show what is the uh, support. What is the Oracle support? So basically, Oracle saying that it is a support. Um, uh, it is a support to run Oracle database on VMware, uh, and uh, this is kind of a statement. Uh, uh, basically, Oracle support, uh, VMware support, and Oracle VM, Oracle support will work together for any issue that you may experience. So, and and uh, and uh, and the uh, second slide show the. The actual support ticket process. So this is, you can reference to the the VMware uh, website. So I'm actually giving the VM VMware website. So you so any issue, you can first talk to uh, VMware a support engineer, and then they're gonna figure out uh, uh, you know uh, the, the 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 support path. It's fully supported. Okay, so I'm gonna use this example, uh, uh, how we, uh, consolidate the 50 database in two physical server architecture. So, uh, I have a, uh, so I have this kind of a database set. So, so, uh, each day this database set, I have two production database, three development database. So this kind of simulating the one application. So, in this application, I have five database. Each has uh, two nodes. So with 50 database, I can consolidate the 10 application environment. I can I can prepare a database for 10 application. Uh, so I can support 10 application. So let's see. Uh, underneath is two VMX storage. I have this very powerful. Uh, 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 for your server, uh, each has the ADA core. So let's discuss how we implement that. So most challenging part, very, which is very similar to Oracle VM, is how to prepare the the network, how to prepare the storage uh, for rack. So so that's the most challenging part. And uh, let's talk about the, screen, the 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 network part, network design. So we prepare uh, three type of network: uh, uh, Oracle uh, public network and Oracle private network. Those two network are basically dedicated to run Oracle Rack database. And the third one is VMware vMotion network. That's uh, something that provided uh, the 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 benefit to do to for the capability. So for example, if your VM running on physical node, if that physical node fail, your entire VV VM can migrate to to second machine, virtual machine, second physical machine. The migration path is the, actually is, is on the vMotion network. So you have to configure this network so that you, you can enable this uh capability. To in, you know, to implement that we we actually uh very similar concept as a bridge concept, but uh, Oracle uh, the VMware use this different concept, a different name called distributed switch. So let's take a look at uh, how distributed switch works. So this is actually the diagram to show the, the 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 distributed switch. So I on the right side, I have these two physical machine, uh, the uh, EXI uh, for the EXI. So as a EXI host, so v, uh, EXI, uh, uh, vSphere actually hypervisor is running on two, two physical machine, and uh, each physical machine has uh, 
six network. Six network. Uh, so I'm actually picking uh, the zero, the uh, the nick card zero as a management pool. Uh, we're not using that, but uh, we pick a uh, we pick a uh, network pool two and a four. Two and a four. Two and a four to bond them together to form the uh, to form the uh, to bond them together as, a, as an input for this for the public this switch. So the you think about this switch, the switch input is the two network port from physical server, and the output is two logical two logical network uh, and. Uh, uh, and one logical oracle is a V motion. That is, uh, that's something that we 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 do the uh, uh, the VMware migration. But second one is a public network. We actually presented this public network to to the virtual machine. Then this is a uh, network called two port two and four. Then we pick a network port three and a five. So same server server. This is three and a five. So we pick a, a port three and a port five from both server and uh, and plug it into this virtual switch as the input. Then output this switch, we prepare two virtual network, physical two virtual network for the uh, for the private network for Oracle private network. In this case, we still can bind it. So 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 when we deploy Oracle database, we're gonna pick a. Uh, Private network and two private network, and present this network into the virtual machine, so the virtual machine will will see three network. So you can see that private network zero, uh, one zero zero one zero one. Those two are private network. You also have a public public network. So this is actually going to create a virtual machine. So inside virtual machine, we pick those available three physical. Uh, 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 network uh, to form the virtual network, and uh, uh, this is actually the display switch setting. So, which we already showed that Th these two are the output: uh, private network one zero zero and one zero one. The output input is uplink group, which connected to port of a EXI server through the, the switch. So, this is a uh, switch one. This is switch two. This is exactly the same as, uh, uh, as this diagram. Yeah. So, so another piece. So, uh, to in order to run Oracle database, we do need the uh, prepare. So those are the summer storage we presented. We prepare three volume for OCR. And we also prepare another one for the GMI, G, uh, the uh, grid infrastructure, the repository, management repository. Then we also prepare, prepare a full uh, uh, volume for data, for Oracle database. Also pre another, prepare another full volume for the, for the, for the redo. And, uh, and we also pre pre prepare the temp. And depending on database, we also prepare for FRA. So. Those are the volume we create on the on storage and present it into the EXS server as a data, called data store. Then, so in Oracle VM, we Oracle recommend, Oracle re, uh, if for Oracle VM, Oracle, re, uh, Oracle rec recommend it just direct present this volume into the virtual machine to serve to, for database. But in VMware, uh, it's not recommended. In VMware, we, we, re, we need to create a, uh, VMDK, which is a VMware file system on top of, on, uh, on the data store. So this is a, so this is actually that we created also, uh, uh, virtual disk, uh, uh, on each of the, 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 each, on each of the data store. Each of those, those are data store. So this is our, our the, actually the, the good, the GUI to show how to create a data store. So you do have a uh, data store name.
you create a data store. Yeah, I think you create a data store. Yeah, you create this is actually the yeah data store. Yeah, and the uh, important thing is to to remember is uh, uh, because we are running Oracle Rack, so which means the the whatever the data file you present has to be shareable. So so we have to share the virtual disk uh, for for all the all the virtual disk for OCR and also Oracle database file. So if you look at it, uh, we have to specify that. Uh, The click sharing to use the multi writer. So if you don't select the multi writer, then only uh, only one VM can access this data file. So that's not something that uh, will meet the Oracle Rack requirement. For Oracle Rack, we do need a multiple VM to 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 access the the data file and the OCR. So that's why we put a, uh, we have to select a multi writer, and also. This also recommend that use uh, thin provisioning lazy zero as a part of a type. This is a part, part of a, a recommendation. And uh, and uh, then after that, we can just get into OS to configure the network. So same as we uh, did before, uh, we the the or the virtual machine C three network, three private network, a uh, three virtual network. So we can use this for Oracle Rack deployment. So we have a public one and a, one public network and two private network. And uh, yeah, the one thing important I want to mention is uh, when you create a VM, make sure you come to you select this important uh, uh, option called a uh, uh, disk enable UUID option. So this actually shows the step. You go to VM, uh, you select a, a edit setting, and uh, you come to advanced. You add this option. Why is so important? Because if you don't do that, uh, then this command called a SCSI ID command will not produce any uh, SCSI ID for you. Uh, and this ID is so critical that uh, if, during your rest of setup, uh, you so if if you don't enable this uh, this option, you cannot get this ID. And then of course, you cannot uh, continue the rest of the setup. So I will show you why this ID is so so important. So, as we know that you have a once you have a volume present to uh, to guest to guest VM, the volume is owned by root, uh, and and uh, and, uh, and uh, as we know, the office structure is running by grid. So we have to change the permission uh, for, of each block device, each de virtual device from grid, from root to grid. So one way to do that is uh, coming to uh, to use uh, uh, UDEV root to set up. Uh, this is how we set up. We come to uh, this directory, specify this file called the Oracle ASM device, uh, this, whatever file name you can put it. But the important is each entry you require this UUID. So this is the UUID you put in. So, and uh, and uh, how to get this UUID is SCSI ID command. So if you don't enable this UUID option in the VM level, you don't get this command. And obviously you cannot, you cannot uh, 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 this config file, and then you, your device will leave if as a root, uh, well, as a root, then your rest of the installation will not succeed. Grid infrastructure cannot uh, read the device uh, on by root. You have so when we said this, the, uh, uh, we you have element trigger command. Suddenly, all this device will, from root to grid allow us to continue the installation. The, the two next steps, install Oracle Grid and also create database. This group will not 
succeed. So for example, in this case, if I decided will be OCR, then this has great. If you still own by root, great infrastructure installation will fail. And SDK one file, then and then uh, before I can create an ASM, this, this device has to be an element user, a great user. So that's why uh, this is a, a, a important step that we don't we don't want to miss. So you have to come to the this VM setting. So by default, this setting is not, you have to come here to edit this setting. So, so that's a lesson learned we, uh, during our installation. So that the rest of the installation is very similar, which I don't want to, uh, I don't have necessarily have to, to. So just re do all correct installation on any virtual environment, you have to prepare, you have to prepare a virtual network that substitute network, private and pu public. You also have to supply the, supply the device uh, for OCR, for uh, GUI, uh, GIMR, and also Oracle, Rec, uh, uh, Oracle database volume. So that is actually pretty much what I want to cover today. And uh, this is actually my website. So I do have uh, all the uh, presentation uh, uh, upload to this website. I haven't done this one yet. So which I'll be doing probably this weekend. Come to this website to download the, uh, you know, it's kind of quick to go through, download. So, so if you come here to this station, uh, you can go through the, the slide. By okay, that concludes my presentation. Thank you very much.